Good morning. So what's good? What's good, guys? Good morning. We are n- number three. Good afternoon or good evening, wherever <laughs> you're at, whenever you're listening to this. We are all on. Uh, we're on episode three, <laughs> officially episode three. We made it so f- this far. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I feel like we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. I guess let's start off by introducing ourselves. This is the third episode yes. of the Terrible Reception Podcast. I messed that up last time. I didn't mess it up this time. I am Jay Suarez. And I am Parlay of Benetton. Yes, sir. And we're back for another episode. So, uh, today, I want to start off by pointing out some things that I realized on the last episode. We don't have mics yet. Yeah, we can start off with that. <laughs> so we don't have the mics yet. Nah. You want to explain the story really quick? Yeah, basically, um, I came across a great, like, uh, I guess it was holiday season sale on eBay. And it was, like, literally, I think, 10 to 15% off. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to grab these shirt mics. So um, through the company, the guy was like, oh, I'm sorry to message you about this, but... We shouldn't have posted it up that it was for sale. Stupid Tom. And, <laughs> no, Tom's actually pretty cool. <laughs> so he like he uh, he posted it up. He's like, listen, we're not going to get this shipment in until this time, this time. He's like, if you're patient, I'm going to throw in some free cables with it. I'm like, you know what? It sounds like a deal. So that time came around, and I was like, hey, what's up, Tom? Like, I know you're supposed to get the shipment. And he's like, yeah, I know. He's like, they delayed it because sure, microphones... Like, they had a bad batch, and, like, they didn't want to ship it out to us, so it's going to be another 16 days. And I'm like, so it's been, like, a good month since I made the order. But um, since then, he's he's throwing in, you guys know, if you're an audio engineer, it's Mogami cables. He's throwing in two of those plus the mics. And he's also throwing in another Rode Smart Lab mic that we've been using. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to be uh, pretty good. We should have it by... The new year. So I think new year, the mics are going to be in here. I know I had a couple of people that hit me up. They said, wait, you know, once you guys get the audio, yeah, it's going to be super exceptional. So. Yeah, man. So um, that's another thing I want to point out. My ums. Your ums. <laughs> yes. Let's introduce a drinking game real quick. Mm. So this is based on the How I Met Your Mother series. Okay. I don't know if you ever checked that out. Probably not. But it's a very popular... Um, TV series from a few years ago where this one character, she was a news anchor. Okay. So she was a news anchor or like a talk show host, like a late night talk show host. Mm-hmm. And every time she used the the te- the, the phrase or the, it's not even a word, but um, mm-hmm. her, her student, uh, this particular teacher's students would take a shot. Oh, really? So she said it so many times that by the end of the episode, they were all like shit faced. Smash. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So... That's going to be your drinking game. Every time I say, um, you guys got to take a shot. It's five o'clock. That's like me saying light. Basically. So I may take a bunch of pauses. That's me trying to deter myself from using, um. It's going to be like Washington Post. Terrible reception podcast. (laughs) Makes alcoholic problems, you know, across So many people going to the hospital with alcohol poisoning because of the butt um game. Horrible. (laughs) So, yeah, that's that's one thing I noticed from the last episode is how we're both very articulate with the things we say, right? Mm-hmm. We're very good at getting our points across. Yeah. You are much better at getting your point across without pausing in between, right? Okay. But I, I notice <clears throat> I, get, I get way off topic. Yeah, and that's what I was going to get at. So you get off way off topic and I have to reel you back in, but you don't say but up. <laughs> I, on the other hand, stay on topic, but I use the word um entirely too much to the point where I was very, very friggin' annoyed. That's why it's important if you guys, like, study yourselves. I think, you know, it's okay. So, we've been watching the podcast to make sure just a good balance of, I guess, commentary, not too many but ums, right. um, stuff like that, and just, like, really good content that you guys can build off of. So... We've been taking notes. We've been taking notes of what you guys have been asking or what you guys have been commenting on. Mm-hmm. It's all super positive. And then, I mean, like, we all know, like, if somebody takes their time out of the day to watch our podcast, yeah. it's like, 
it's super exceptional. Yeah, because uh, the last episode was about an hour, like, 17 minutes or something like that? Yeah, an hour and 20 yeah. minutes? It was, it was, like, 20 minutes longer than what we did the first time. Right, so the first one was about an hour or so. <clears throat> um, and then one person had told me they were 17 minutes into, like, listening to the podcast. And I'm like, this lady's an entire mom. Yeah, <laughs> she has two kids. She has a husband. She has work. She has like her own hobbies and stuff like that. For yeah. her to listen to seventeen minutes of it, That's, she's a good friend of mine from high school too. So it's kind of weird me calling her lady. That was weird. <laughs> but uh, shout out to Alexis. Thank you for listening. Um, yeah. Here goes another shot for you guys. Uh, <laughs> I went to a so, dope, dope show last night. I want to share that with you because because uh, uh, that would be a perfect segue into what I want to talk about first. Okay, so, perfect. Uh, so I was shoot. at uh, set it up. <laughs> I was at Drum last night in New York City. It's on uh, Avenue A. Great venue, by the way. So we're recording this Thursday morning, right? So you went to the show Wednesday, Wednesday night. Right? Wednesday night. So uh, Wednesday, great, great show. I was there to support a natural. Um, he is an incredible R&B singer out of Jersey. That he is. Um, he was opening up for this other artist named Darius Scott. And that guy really put on a show as well. Uh, you know, great, great vocal range, great control over his vocals, great production. Uh, he's definitely headed a lot of places, just like A Natural. Uh, they're very complimentary artists to each other, so... If you guys want to, I'm going to give you the ads. Maybe we can link them down below. But these are definitely artists you want to check out. So we have A Natural Forever. That's with a four. And then Ever. That's that's his at. And then I had this one right here, which is D-S-C-O-T-T music but with a k m-u-s-i-k darius uh it's darius scott but it's d scott music and uh both both awesome artists if you guys follow me you can see in the next 24 hours i tag them great r&b artists um yeah great r&b artists yes sir so that brings me to my question of the day yes i i Typically, when we when we do these podcasts, I, I come up with like a whole um, docket of things that we can speak of, right? Yeah. So typically what I do is I put it into my phone and mm. I don't let Rich know anything about it. So when we talk about a topic, uh, he has no idea what we're going to talk about. So I kind of just throw the ideas out there and I want to get his true, genuine response. We were at the Trucy Platters. Yes. Yeah. So we were taking so we were taking notes uh, this time around, and I let him in on a couple things. So I texted him yesterday because I was listening to a couple debates the last few days about who the king of R and B is, right? Mm. So I hit you up yesterday, and I was like, you know, get your little list going so we could bounce ideas off of each other back and forth because I want you to actually sit here and think about who you want to bring up. Uh-huh. So, you know, the topic of king of R and B, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to hear. Since all this stuff is very subjective, right? Mm-hmm. Anybody can have the king of R&B, whoever their favorite artist is. Yeah. So I want to eliminate R. Kelly okay. from the conversation. I think a lot of people want to eliminate R. Kelly <clears throat> because uh, I don't even know, like, I mean, word on the street is, like, even Chicago. Nobody's messing with R. Kelly. Right. R. Kelly is under a lot of fire. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the, the reason I didn't want to bring him up because is I feel like the general consensus would say... Outside of his personal issues and, you know, all the other stuff that he was going through, mm-hmm. I would say he's up there for a lot of people, right? R&B like, yeah, wise, as I, far as the accolades and the yeah. things that he's accomplished. Musically. We actually we actually had this discussion <clears throat> last night and we had it amongst Darius, A Natural, and Lenny Harrell, which is another exceptional R&B artist. Um, they were, I mean, Darius was saying for him, all day, it would be Stevie Wonder. Okay. So he's like, that's the king of R&B, Stevie Wonder, a natural. He had mentioned R. Kelly, but, you know, everybody was in disagreement. A little of, iffy because of the other stuff that he... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, um, there's other couple names like Bobby Brown, but not Bobby Brown now. It's Bobby Brown then. Back so then, like, yeah. Okay, so let's let's put a little context to this. Let's say in the last 20 years or so. Mm-hmm. 
That's around R. Kelly's time, right? Yeah. Let's say maybe the last 15 to 20 years, right? Yeah. So that'll eliminate Stevie. That'll eliminate probably Bobby too, right? Because Bobby's a little outside of the 20 year. What was it, yeah. the 80s? Early 80s? No, late mm. late 80s? Late 80s. Cause Early it's 90s. Like, because, like, even late 80s people, like, think it's maybe... I mean, they go way past that, but you have right. Ron Isley, mm-hmm. the Isley Brothers. You have, like, I mean, that was, like, super R&B to, like, mm-hmm. what R. Kelly was feeling. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you have Keith Sweat. Whew. You have Casey and JoJo. Okay. I mean, those are duos, so that you can't... I don't okay, know if you well, can have Kings. Okay, so them. let's say this. Because the question I really wanted to ask you was, who are your... Let's say name five. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Name five, and if you have a couple extra, we'll we'll do honorable mentions because that's basically what I have. Gotcha. It could either be group, a single person, okay, or a duo. Okay. R and B, they could blend into the let's say pop. If you pick up somebody that's like within the last ten years or so, okay, because pop is very popular these days. Sure, sure. So R and B kind of blends into the poppy area so who would you say <clears throat> it doesn't have to be in any particular order let's say top five top five past 10 years i would say the last 15 20 years 15 20 years um i mean who these are like really i guess random um want me to give you a con- uh some some of mine so you can get an idea of where i'm going if you want i was gonna say the two that really came to mind for me um I really think that Tank is a great artist. Mm-hmm. I think that because um, he's still here. That's mm-hmm. another thing that's important to me. Mm-hmm. Like Tank started back then. He has great content, great music, and he's mm-hmm. still here trying to adapt. Mm-hmm. And I think that's dope. And um, he can sing his ass off too. Oh, yeah. He could definitely sing. Brian mm-hmm. McKnight. I think Brian McKnight. People forgot about Brian McKnight. Mm-hmm. But Brian McKnight was super strong mm-hmm. when he held. Uh, I think he has great R&B. I don't know, like, people are going to probably argue with the range and how much he's put out and stuff like that. I think Brian McKnight is... Tough. Yeah. Um, I I your mind. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Anytime. <laughs> what coffee are you drinking? <laughs> oh, some random, like, I don't know, bagel store coffee. It's not really good. It's just I need some coffee. He said mm-hmm. he got those vocals right this morning. <laughs> So, Which is um, funny because coffee usually makes me like, groggy and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. have to clear my throat every five seconds. No, um, <laughs> I would say go with your list and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little time okay. to think about it in between. Somebody didn't do his homework. No, I could I could <laughs> definitely give you some, but like it's so weird what I consider. Okay, you know? so I broke it down. I have one, two. What is that? What is that music? I don't even know. It's outside? I guess so. Apologize for any background noise, guys. There's Please. a couple people outside this door that are making a lot of noise, but, yeah. you know, it just brings a little effect to it, a little sprinkle to the podcast. You might hear the angry train today. I thought about. we had, like, like, like <laughs> dope music that just came in. Yo, for where real. It's like, like, let's talk about R&B artists of the thought, week. I thought I had, like, a soundboard here yeah, right. going. I'm like, damn, okay. So, let me see. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine. So I have my top five and then four honorable mentions, which are fairly new artists Mm. that I admire quite a bit. So the first one on my list is a group, Boys to Men. Can't ignore Boys to Men. Mm. The next one would be 112, another group. Okay. Now 112, they had one of my favorite R&B songs of all time, Cupid. Remember Cupid? Hell yeah. I'm not going to sing it because I'll butcher it. And then they have one of my favorite hooks of all time on a rap song. Can you name that? 112 did a hook to a rap song. Mob Deep? One of my favorite. No? Um, one of my favorite rap songs. Oh, Sky's the Limit. Boom. Biggie. Mm-hmm. Biggie. Sky's the Limit, one of my favorite hooks of all time. That that beat is just so nostalgic. That Once whole comes song in, is so dope. I love did it. Did you ever notice? Did you pay attention to the lyrics of that song? Well, I know like Biggie's verse and stuff like that, but like... What in yeah. particular stood out? So, I listened to it recently because I put it on one of my playlists. Mm-hmm. And I played it over and over and over again. I'm like, sometimes I kind of just play music in the background. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of just zone out, especially <clears throat> old songs like this. Yeah. So, I sit there and I'm like trying to break down the lyrics. And I'm like, what the song is actually about, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm listening to the song. 
sounds like a beautiful song, right? So it has one twelve on the hook, beautiful voices on the hook, yeah. and they had Biggie. You know, Biggie had a really good rap voice. Yeah. And I'm listening to the lyrics, right? He, he, you would think it's like a love song. This guy's rapping about like selling drugs. Yeah. Basically, pistol whipping people. Yeah. All for the end goal of the cookies with ha- butter crunch, <laughs> or having money for his daughter's college investment, right? Yeah. So, in a sense, it's, like, a beautiful message, I guess, because you're saving for your daughter's college fund. <laughs> it's a hood-ass love song. Right, so, so yeah, so I listen to that song quite a bit. Um, Mind you, have... take a quick... Am I in focus? Because I just moved this. Because I know last time in our podcast, I was out of focus. Yo, that shit pissed me off so much. Right? So, the cameras that we use is the Sony A7 III's, right? Beautiful cameras, beautiful crisp image, and the autofocus is typically on point. Yes. So, but if you see right here, I don't know if you can see my hand, but this thing is supposed to be the mic stand. Mm -hmm. And in the last episode, it was focusing on this rather than that pretty face right there. (laughs) So for the last 20 minutes or so, I don't know if you guys noticed in the last podcast, if you watched it on YouTube... His face was blurry. Yeah. And I was trying to cut around it, like, when I was doing the editing. No. And it was just, like, impossible unless I focused on myself the Everybody's last 20 like, minutes. come on, bro. Which I would have loved. But, you know, when you're talking, I have, like, the weirdest, like, waiting face. So I'm just sitting here, like... I have that blank stare, too. I'm like... <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the autofocus kind of messed this up. So what we did is we set up this little ninja screen. Uh, we would show you, but I don't want to move anything. Uh in one of the future equipment yes. episodes, we yes. will fill you in on what we're using. But because it's super <coughs> important what gear you use, I'm it's it's I'm always admin on it mm-hmm. on it because it's like one, it makes your life easier. Two, you're gonna have a better product at the end of the day. And yeah. yes, a lot of people are like, oh my god, that's so expensive. But when you think about the return, mm-hmm. never that expensive. Yeah, because. We do everything ourselves, right? So we have a, a camera set up right here, shooting me. Camera set up right here. A camera right here, shooting yeah. him. So we have to constantly keep uh, attention to the camera and what it's doing and all this stuff. So we can't do it if there's a screen on the back of the camera because yeah, we would have to like lean this way, lean that way, and stuff like that. So now I have this screen right here. We don't have a screen on there, so hopefully I'm in focus. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I have a screen on here, which lets me know how much time it's running. And another thing I don't like about these cameras that I'm not a big fan of is it only records 30 minutes at a time. Yeah, yeah. Unless you have this screen hooked up. And they it, did that only because over. it's like, I, I realize it's a tax thing. It's mm-hmm. like if, if, if it could record past 30 minutes... It would be considered a cinema camera. Ah. So it's like they would have to sell it differently. So okay. it's one of those things that I know that rule is being it's done of, mm-hmm. of this year. So I think the next cameras are gonna come out. I don't think there's gonna be any recording limit. That's perfect because yeah. it gets kind of annoying, like having to focus on how much time. Yeah. Like I have my phone in front of me on a timer. Uh, with like 25 minutes at a time just so we can know when to mind you the monitor is an external recorder Mm -hmm. but we're not taking that uh step right now (laughs) we're gonna do it with the mics we're gonna you know we're gonna up it more and more but so maybe then this well this episode definitely maybe the next episode you'll hear this typic uh this type of audio quality but hopefully by the Episode after that, we'll have the new mics, and you'll hear a difference between the quality of what we have now, which isn't bad, mm-hmm. but compared to the quality that we're going to have moving exactly. forward with the new mics. It'll be a lot more so, interesting to listen to if you don't have this visual on YouTube. Right. So, um, but we do want to push the YouTube video because, you know, when you're listening to it is one thing, but when then you see, like, visuals, what we want to start doing moving forward as well is... Making things more, I guess for lack of a better term, more visual, right? We exactly. want to push you guys to watch the YouTube videos because that's tech- technically where we want you to go. Yeah. So maybe we'll add some animations or, I don't know, some like extra clips, kind of like we did with the promo videos. Yeah. Where, <laughs> I don't know if you saw the promo videos that we put together, but basically, you know, with some of the stupid things that we said in the last episode, we added like little memes or popular little videos Because that's, that's, that's what's going to build... <laughs> 
I guess this podcast. You're right. gonna come back for something mm-hmm. stupid that you might like. Mm-hmm. Or, our conversations, which hopefully is the main, you know, yeah. thing. But so we want to set ourselves aside from all the other podcasts, right? Because all the other podcasts, they all have the, the good cameras or the good studio. They all have one particular element that keeps you coming back. Exactly. And we want to have all of that. Exactly. Somehow, some way. I know it's difficult, but we'll get there. But anyway, back to our topic. Back to our topic. Yeah, after all that. Um, another shot. So, Boys to Men, 112. Mm-hmm. The next people I have on my list another group jagged edge so these are your kings and princes and everything I, w- else are I don't want to say kings i would say people that i thoroughly enjoyed okay right because i don't want to say kings of anything because then everybody's like, oh my god they're not the kings of anything gotcha uh so i have those three groups so those are the only three groups that i have so now moving to individual artists okay if i had to pick someone mm-hmm Within the last twenty years, of who would be the king of R and B for me, mm-hmm. it would be Usher. I think. Mm. Okay. Because Usher has had such a long career. Yes. He's had so many hit singles. Mm. Uh, he, f- I guess, mingled in the pop world as well. Yeah. He did uh, a lot. Yeah, just the the, the accomplishments that he's that he's that he's had. I gotta say, I miss 16. old Usher though. Like I miss yeah, everybody the does. last the last song that I really enjoyed was Climax produced by Diplo. Mm. That was super dope because that that was something. Or the one where unfortunately I think he lost his lost his stepson or his son. I don't remember the song. And I think it's called Breathe, mm-hmm. and it was like like a EDM dance track. Okay. But like the lyrically, mm-hmm. once he explained what it was about, I was like, mm-hmm. oh my god. I mean, I haven't listened to anything after Climax, I think. Which, Climax was super dope. Yeah. Um, he just released a new project with, um... Who's the producer? Oh, my God. I Danger feel... Hands make a comeback? Nah, Danger Hands is Danger dope. Hands? Danger <laughs> Hands was... Shout out to Danger Hands. Wherever you are, yeah, whatever we're... you're doing... We hope that you're watching this someday, because we love you, man. <laughs> Danger Hands, bro. I'm, I'm gonna check in on him, see if he's up to anything, but... The creative Danger Hands was, though. like, the apprentice of, like, Timbaland, right? Timbaland, yeah. So he had a very Timbaland-ish sound to him. Yeah. And I think Timbaland... No offense to Timbaland, but I think he took a lot, a lot of his stuff and took it as his own. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so Usher would be up there on my list. Uh, another person that would be on my list within the last maybe 10 years or so mm-hmm. would be Mr. Miguel. Wow. Miguel yeah. is my my guy, man. Like the song Adorn. Yes. Adorn. I was just going to say. I could legit, and you think I'm exaggerating, I could legit play that song on loop. For like ten days straight. When it first came tired. out, I was I was in the same zone. Mm-hmm. I feel like he really is kind of like that uh, Marvin Gaye of our time. Yeah, he he definitely has. Adorn is a classic song mm-hmm. for our generation. I think so dope. I think that's one of the best R and B songs of our yeah, generation. Yeah. I think a hundred to my to you know for me. And the funny thing is that every time I hook up my phone, right, and mm-hmm. it doesn't go straight to either Spotify or like because I use Google Play Music as well or. Um, What's the other one? Apple Music? Yeah, yeah. It usually goes into my iTunes store. Gotcha. So in my iTunes store, I purchased a lot of albums back in the day. Mm. So it usually plays on shuffle, being the first song alphabetically gotcha. by the title of the song. And the first one that always pops up is Adorn. That's dope. And then the one that plays right after that is the Adorn remix with Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so every time I get in the car and I don't choose the song, Adorn always comes out and I'm not mad at it. Such a dope song. So Miguel is my guy. Uh, right after Usher, mm. the next one who always gets slept on within the last ten years also would be Ty Dolla Sign. Interesting. And that's like a hot take because a lot of people don't really listen. I think he's extremely underrated. He's a great <clears throat> instrumentalist. <clears throat> he's a great singer songwriter. I think he yeah he's nice across the board. Mm. Particularly, I, I guess if you're going for like real classics, I don't think he's. Dunny, no. He's not the typical like R and B, but no, I mean, no, no, no. I'm just saying the guy that I enjoy the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the artist that I enjoy the most. Now, <clears throat> another one which would blend into like the poppy. Nate Dogg, rest in peace. Oh, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Dogg was like that hood R and B. It's like guy that sound that had like a decent voice that can hold the note, but was like wasn't opera. a singer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hood opera. That's the perfect way to put it. So uh, the next person would be more R and B, pop 
pop. Okay. Super emo. Who do you think it would be if I say super emo? Oh, man. Um, super emo kind of been more on the pop end the last few years. I have people you compare that, me to him all the time. Yeah, I know. You say he's my younger brother. Yeah, I I, I know the weekend. The weekend. That there was gonna go. say. So the weekend is up there on my list for the R and B artists. You would label him as R and B, right? Yeah. Pop R and B. Yeah. Um, especially recently, he's been more into the pop realm. But uh, let's see. And then the last two are like brand spanking new. They've been like out for like the last two three years maybe okay now this particular guy he and i've mentioned it to you several times that i say he sounds great let's see if he can figure him out he sounds great with whoever he's featured with okay he's brand new he's probably like 20 maybe who do you think it is and i've I've mentioned this a couple times like he sounds great with just about everybody he's featured on i was gonna say if if it's like new cats like somebody like august alcina or uh august alcina's been out for a minute he's been out he's been struggling with like mental health stuff uh oh um the guy who just did the joint with ty dollar sign um ty dollar sign and bryson right was it no you showed me a song with him. Khalid. Khalid. That's Khalid. my guy, man. I love Khalid. Yeah, he sounds dope with anybody he's on. Like, he did that song with... It was Ty Dolla Sign, right? Yeah. And Bryson Tiller it was like a crazy combo. No. Or it, Black. Black. It was Black. It was Black. And he sounds great with Black. He yeah. sounded great with uh, that British artist, Billie Eilish, I think you pronounce it. Yeah. He did a song with her. She sounds super dope. Um, And then the last artist, he did a song with... Uh, fairly recently, um, she's in her early twenties. I don't know if you're going to get this, but I've played her songs in the car a couple times. And this, this girl, she's, she's my girl, man. It's definitely got to be Sabrina Claudio. That's my girl. <laughs> if we had like a soundboard, I would have, bam, 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 <laughs> you win the prize. We need DJ Jules for that one. Yo, for real. <laughs> so that rounds out my list of R&B artists that I thoroughly enjoy within the last... 15, 20 that was years. impressive. And I kind of just box myself and try to keep it under 10. Okay. There's dozens of other artists that I would have put on that list. Um, I would have put... Remember Joe? Yeah. Joe was super dope. Genuine was super dope Genuine. back in the day. Yeah. You mentioned Brian McKnight. He was super dope as well. So, you know, this list could have gone on and on and on and on. So, um, I kind of just, like, tried to compile it with, like, older mm. and newer. So, I definitely yeah. like, like, I think Miguel definitely up there. Uh, Chris Brown enters more like the pop world, but mm-hmm. he's done so much that it's just like he's there with like Michael Jackson. We all know yeah. that. Like you gotta give him credit with credits too. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, the uh, the Brian Knights of the game. People for, forget about Drew Hill, Cisco a lot, but like they were doing the thing. Did um, you put Jay Holiday on there? Jay Holiday was dope. He was definitely an R and B cat. You know why I'm laughing, right? What's that? Did you watch that video, Jay Holiday? Yeah. More recently, no, I didn't see that one. <laughs> okay, so I'll set it up for you. But Jay Holiday, mind you, I haven't seen this guy in like maybe ten, maybe fifteen years. He disappeared. There's a little like Joel Santana now, so he's wow. recording a video. I'm guessing like either on Instagram Live or I don't understand why he would record this and post it later. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's trying to flex on anybody, but so basically he's outside of like some kind of establishment. He's Standing outside, chiming in on the whole king of R&B thing. Mm-hmm. So he starts going on a little rant, like, uh, there's only three kings of R&B, blah, blah, blah. And I think he mentions R. Kelly first or something. And while he's in the middle of getting into his rant, you hear some lady in the background go, excuse me, are you valet? Oh, wow. <laughs> so his reply is the best. Yeah. So he replies, now with this Gucci Co, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> now with this Gucci Co, baby, now you know valet. Yeah, <laughs> So wow! So that was the funniest thing of all week, man. That's that was so funny. So yeah, that's that's Jay Holiday. People forget the about one hit wonder. People forget about <laughs> D'Angelo too. D'Angelo, D'Angelo. did like, like a lot of breaking moments for R and B. Uh, it was um, like super soulful too. Like super. Another person I would have put on there was probably Music Soul Child and oh, Maxwell. Bil- what about Bilal? Bilal too. Rafael Sadiq. If Rafael Sadiq. If we go into those genres. A lot so of who, dope R&B artists. 
I love our. I'm gonna well, agree with you with Miguel. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna agree with you on Usher. Mm-hmm. I gotta um. <laughs> I gotta put my mans up there. John B. John B. <laughs> John B. Was like really, really, really dope. Uh, smooth R and B for that time. I mean, if Tupac hops on your track, you know it's official. John so, B. John B. Man. Fun fact for anybody that doesn't know. This guy right here, obsessed with John B for some reason. Super dope artist from back in the day, but he has like this thing about Sade and John B. I don't know. Like, two, I don't know why. It's mad, like, <laughs> mad nostalgic for me. Like, yeah. I remember, like, in high school, anybody that knows me from high school, I was making, like, my hustle was not only being a good student, but, like, I would, like, literally, I had a CD burner and I would burn R&B and dance mixtapes. <laughs> and sell them to people for five dollars a pop because for yeah. some reason people come to school they're like yo I'll ask my mom and dad for money tomorrow and I'll give it to you and that's that was my hustle like because I was just a kid that was into music and stuff like that people would give me their CDs I would burn the best of the best <laughs> that I <laughs> wanted I would Napster that shit LimeWire yeah, that Napster. shit and then I would just like make these CDs and like literally sell them for like five dollars a pop so i leave school for like with thirty dollars to me that was like a lot so you know what's funny about that now that you mentioned burning cds uh i was talking about it recently with somebody that my cds back in the day because we all used to make cds right yeah, yeah. it was before the mp3 days we kind of dating ourselves but um so the cds i used to have like a format Mm-hmm. Like, I was always Mr. Super Organized, like I mentioned in the last episode. I'm Mr. Super Organized. So, what I would do is I would try to keep it under 20 tracks. Because mm-hmm. you could fit, like, 20 to 25. Sometimes even 30 tracks, depending on how long the songs are yeah. on a CD, right? So, I would do, literally, my f- top five favorite rap songs. Jay's Mega Mix. Yo, basically. <laughs> so... And I, I don't think I wrote Mega Mix on there, but I wrote something <laughs> similar to it, right. some, some stupid corny stuff. But So I would put f- my top five favorite rap songs, right? Yeah, yeah. Tracks one through five. Tracks six to ten were my favorite reggaeton songs oh, back wow. in the day, because reggaeton was back, popping back in high school. So that would bring me to ten tracks. So then the last maybe five to like eight, because mm-hmm. I would like try to keep it under eight, uh, 20, would be R&B. So that would be my format. It would be rap, reggaeton, R and B. Weird transition, but so, would you? <laughs> let me let me ask you this: Would you consider Robin Thick part of this list? Ooh, Robin Thick. Because Robin Thick, even though he didn't have like the largest career, mm-hmm. I feel like he had like like so many dope songs like in the in the sense like i I think the loss without you like yeah because i think he it's acoustic i think his how many projects did he have like two three uh you know what the beauty of the internet right at my fingertips there's so many great artists i don't think you can have a king of r&b like there's anthony hamilton he's got such a soulful dope voice um robin thick discography because I forgot about that Robin Thicke. I think that whole Blurred Lines thing kind of like messed up his thing. It definitely did. And plus, with the thing with his wives. Uh, I mean, so that's everybody's was... like personal business. But what, like, what they gave to our discography in a sense. like Looks stuff. like there were four projects. Something like that. So it was something else in 2008. Because he, he started off with the long hair and a bike looking like a... Looking like a hipster hippie. In 2006 was the, commercial. the evolution of Robin Thicke. Yeah. Which I think we're lost. There's angry, our boy. Angry train. We're going to come up with like a little uh, like emoji for it. Yeah, so I can go across the screen whenever he passes by so yeah. angrily. So then there's sex therapy. And then there's blurred lines. Yeah. And that's kind of where he fell off the, the map. But um, where were we with that conversation? I don't know. Train oh, mad at burning me. discs. <laughs> So, so burning this, I guess. Okay, so uh, King R and B. You wanted to mention anybody else before we move on? I think I think we're we're basically on the uh, the same the same. We could go all day. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I got a couple questions on Instagram and YouTube about the fear of failure, and they wanted us to talk about that and how we overcome the fear of failure. Um, you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, personally, I've overcome my fears of failure because 
or how i've embraced i've embraced failure and i don't see it i guess how most people do anymore i see it as um it's like failure is like going to the gym mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you got to break muscle to make muscle mm-hmm. and that that's how i feel like i said if you don't make mistakes you can't you can't get to a better you you can't You'll have nothing to uh, reflect on. You'll have nothing to to look back on and say, okay, I can do that better. It's like having yes men. Yes men are the complete opposite of failure because they're making you they're making your failures look like accomplishments where you don't change your attitude or your way of approaching a situation. Mm-hmm. So I think, like, um, you know, when I look at failure, I actually anticipate failure. Hmm. I anticipate failure because it's one of those... Um, I don't think you anticipate it more like embrace it. No, I embrace when it. it happens. I anticipate it in the sense of it, get, it, gets, it gets me to the answer quicker. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if, if I think I'm, if, if I just believe I'm going about it the right way... Or I don't go fully in, mm-hmm. then I don't reach that point of saying, "Oh, I uh, could have done this better." I see what you know you're what saying. I'm saying? Okay. So, like, that's why sometimes I anticipate <laughs> the oh, "I fucked up" moment because it's cl- it gets me closer to the "Aha, I got it" moment. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that. the The only way you can get past that is basically embracing it mm-hmm. and understanding that you will catch some L's. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you can either be afraid of the dark <laughs> mm-hmm. or you can find peace in the dark. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like a lot of people like I think once I talk to certain people that's dealt with depression or other people that even in high school like when when people like really embrace like the, the goth culture and stuff like that at first I can't even lie like I was kind of skeptical about it but like once you get to talk to somebody you understand why they embrace it. And that even opened doors to me to uh, appreciate certain designers because you're like, oh, that's kind of goth or that's kind of like to this or this. But you're like, okay, I understand what you're trying to represent through your clothing. And I feel like those people the most, it's so... Sometimes it's not perfect and that's the way life is. It's like, it's full of failures. So like (coughs) even... You buy like a sweatshirt or something, there's rips in it. Mm -hmm. That became popular because it's like, I think on a representation through artistry, it's saying that even though this has a hole in it, it's dope. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we have our scars. We have so many things in our lives that, again, we're not showing on social media. You know what I'm saying? We're not showing like on Thanksgiving, you might have burn the fucking casserole, but your turkey looks great. You know what I'm saying? You're just showing the turkey at the end. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, maybe what somebody would appreciate to be like, they look up to you and they're like, wow, Jay's such a good cook. Mm -hmm. But they didn't see that you messed up on that part. So Mm -hmm. they feel like they have no space to mess up. Yeah. Where you did that Mm -hmm. to make a better casserole next year. Yeah, yeah. The fear of failure. Now, the message we're trying to portray here is that you have to embrace failure. Yeah. you cannot fear failure because mm-hmm. uh, it's inevitable. You're yeah. going to fail at a lot of things. And I, I mentioned it a couple of times. I don't think I know anybody that's caught more L's than us. Yeah. But the important thing is that you learn from each one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Learn how to do it better. Like last episode. Check this out, right? Jay just said, let me be on my Gary V shit real quick, right? Mm-hmm. You catch L's, right? Uh-oh. What do they look like? L's, you flip them upside down, it becomes a bracket for your trophy, okay? <laughs> you put a trophy on that bracket, all those L's, you got a nice bracket for your trophies, because now you're successful, all right? I guess that works. <laughs> I guess that works. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so failure, right? Um... So nobody's caught more L's than us. No. Nobody's caught more uh, trophy brackets than us. Nope. So it's up to you to flip that and turn that L into a trophy bracket. Trophy bracket. Boom. So 
to, I guess, bring it all together, you have to try things. Mm-hmm. You cannot fear failure. No. Because you will regret not taking that risk. It's like even sexually, mm-hmm. right? Uh-oh. Even sexually, yeah, you don't... Kids, cover your ears. <laughs> you might come into the game like, okay, I'm going to be a stunner, right? And then it's like, you might have it in you where you're like, okay, you might be in tune with your sexuality, but we all come from a place where your girlfriend or your boyfriend taught you how to do something mm-hmm. or navigate you to the truth, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, to get you to the place of you're the sexual god now. mm you know what I'm saying? So, if, or you get to learn your partners, you know, mm. and then you, you add that to every, you know, situation that you've been through a relationship. So you have, you, you, you have to fail. You have to come in novice uh-huh. to end up expert. So you have to prematurely ejaculate all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving along. Move I, hope, along. I hope we got our point across. <laughs> exactly. Um, just just take risks, man. Can stuff, I stuff. can I hit you with a question? Yeah. Okay. I was gonna throw a little metaphor out there, but can I throw Add a metaphor, metaphor while I'm shooters triggered? Shoot. They always shoot. Steph Curry has an off night. That kid's shooting from like thirty five feet away from the basket. Shoot or shoot. They're gonna miss sometimes. This actually this is not even well, I have a question for you, but this is actually a great transition. Mm-hmm. Saying that I've read up on this that the version of you that you think everybody perceives doesn't exist. So, whether you... Doesn't exist to you? To anyone. Okay. Excellent. So, it's like the way I perceive you is completely different the way your mother perceives you, mm. the way your other friends perceive you. So, the idea of who you think you are to everybody, you don't exist. Like, you work really hard to be known as a really nice guy or really genuine guy or a giving person. Like, you do all these things. But it's funny enough, as much as you work hard for that, it's funny how everybody else perceives you. Hmm. Like, if you were, like, to pass away in this life and everybody comes to your funeral and talks about you... Mm -hmm everybody's going to have a whole different version of Jay mm. versus the one that exists in your head to who you think you are to everybody. Mm. And I think that this is why you can, when we're talking about failure and stuff, like just do your best mm-hmm. because not everybody is going to be like, oh yeah, J- Jay's the best artist. They'll be mm-hmm. like my friend Tony or my friend like like Sam is the best artist. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like, even though you try so hard mm-hmm. to give you your all and give everything you know to everybody else, they don't always see it like that. Mm. And I think that's something else I realized where it's like, do you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, everybody's palate is different. Everybody's eyes are different. Yeah. And like, even if you're like, this is the best type of food I've ever had, you got to try this. You'll spoon feed that to somebody that'll be like, eh, it's all right. Yeah. I've had better. And you're like, what? Uh, I've done that before. So it's the same thing with, I think, how personalities are received. Yeah. So like this, the best of the best doesn't mm-hmm. exist. Yeah. I guess to jump off, of, um, to piggyback off that too, is you, we do, we do music, right? And we do arts, we do photography, we do videography. Mm-hmm. We do all these things. And all of those things are basically things that we do where we need validation, right? Mm-hmm. So we need perfect valid- for my next question. Okay. So validation is something that we seek as artists, yes. which is we try not to let it control us. But at the same time, we need validation to know that where we're going and how we're doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you need to program your brain in a sense where you have to be happy with whatever you're putting out there first before you receive any kind of validation. Exactly. Because, like you mentioned, everybody's ears, everybody's eyes, everybody's palate's different. So if you're happy with what you're putting out, Mm -hmm. then that's the most important thing. Because at the end of the day, you have to be happy with whatever it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can't let anybody control your emotions. You can't let anybody control your art. Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to satisfy everybody. That's true. So, and it's this, not for everybody. Th- this is what gets me into my next topic because I've had a lot of run-ins with 
artists and people that I looked up to for many years and they don't end up being who you expected them to be. You know what I'm saying? I've had maybe like two artists that I've met over time that I've worked with on a professional level that I'm like, wow, like you are who I thought you were going to be versus like 180 of like, you're not the nicest person. You're not the most intellectual person. You're not as dope as I thought you were. You know what I'm saying? So like my question to you is, have you ever had a run in or a situation with an athlete, artist, anybody that you looked up to that kind of gave you the cold shoulder that you didn't feel accepted by and you just like your whole life you looked up to them? Hmm. Have you ever been burned by somebody you looked up to? Uh, da, 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 da. I don't think I have. I don't think I've met anybody that I've really looked up to, and I don't want to like throw any names out there. Gotcha. But we have met a few people uh, over the years, you know, going to events and networking with people, and we've bumped into artists that seem cool on on screen or on tracks or wherever you may see them on social media and stuff like that, and they come across as kind of assholes. Yeah. Excuse my language, but um, I don't think. I think our dopest run in because this this an honorable <laughs> mention Red Man, mm. Red Man. He was super, he was exactly how you would imagine him. Yeah. You want to tell that? Well, high as hell. <laughs> so we met Red Man, right? We were younger. We were a lot younger, right? So we we met Red Man. We were at a um. Wasn't that long ago? I'm saying maybe like seven years, six, seven, seven years, years or something like that. So Jay and I are at this um this event to raise money for the Newark school system. Uh-huh. And um, we met Redman. It was funny because, like, at first, we were checking people in. Mm-hmm. That was, like, our job in the beginning. And the guy comes up. He's like, uh, Reggie, Reggie Noble. Mm-hmm. And we're like, what? Ding. And then we, like, we looked up, and Jay was like, oh, shoot, it's Redman. I was mm-hmm. like, because we saw him without his hat. He had cornrows. Like, he was in a suit. That was the first time I ever seen him in braids. Yeah, it was crazy. So, like, he was super down to earth. And then um, we were also with Lords of the Underground and a bunch of other, like... Uh, Mr. Cheeks was there, too. Mr. Mr. Cheeks? Cheeks. Mr. Cheeks was there. So, Lights like... camera action. Um, you know, everybody in those circles always kind of bigs us up as Benetton, like as producers, as artists, just, you know, whatever we do. And we were, you know, honored by that. So they invited us back to the studio. Mm -hmm. And these are one of these situations where like your heart's racing Mm -hmm. because you're like, one, you're a young guy. Two, you're like, this is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I remember like Redman, he watched our music video that we created. He's like, I love stuff like this. He's like, I love that Mm -hmm. dark but dope stuff you guys do. And that was just crazy to me because you look up to this person, you've been listening to them on the radio your whole life. And now this person's here honoring your work, bigging you up. Mm -hmm. So like, I remember Redman, he was like, yo, you got that funk? And I was like, yeah, I got that funk. At first I was like, I hope he's talking about music because I don't have weed on me. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, yo, play me something. You got that phone. So they were playing stuff in the studio already. I'm telling you, this guy is so humble because this guy took my cell phone. And I, there's this beat that I had that I was like, I always wanted Red Man to hear. Mm-hmm. He took it into the closet. Mm-hmm. He stayed in there. Like, probably the whole beat. Mm-hmm. He came in and he, like, he looked at me. He's like... You got that funk played on the big shit. And I was like, I felt so good. I remember Jay was there and like Jay was recording some moments. And that's just one of those guys. He even offered. This is a part where people are going to get mad at me because Red Man, he's like, yo, you smoke. He's like, you want to smoke this? And like, I don't smoke like that. Like I smoke and I've, I've done it a couple of times, but I'm not. I'm a lightweight. So if I smoked, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I denied it. Like there's probably people across the world that dream to do that, Mm -hmm. to smoke with red or meth. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? But I was like, it wouldn't be me to do that in that situation. So also stay true to yourself. You don't have to be like peer pressure just because it's a dope moment. Like 
it would be cool to be like, yo, I smoked it with red, but I also have a dope moment to say, I denied red. And you remembered it. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> When he said smoke red with red or meth, yeah. like he says smoke red and meth. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't want to do meth. stay away from meth. <laughs> stay away from meth, kids. <laughs> so, um, how do we come here? How do we get here? I don't, I don't know. know. But anyway, I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is your most distant music memory? Like, what... And I know you've told me to se- tell me this several times. Mm. Uh, what was let's say a memory that you've had from back in the day that was just like if somebody asks you what was your first distant memory of music, what would it be? Could just, be anything. Just like entering music or like just music in general, like how you get introduced to music, or just like a fond memory that you've had from back in the day. Who was your first artist that you listened to? Maybe scrapped up some cash to buy a CD of some kind. Yeah, um, I think it almost I have goes one in my head to see if you you'll talk about this. Now that I even go back even further, I remember that my father, he he collected records, so I think my father was my first introduction into music. So he would listen to classical jazz. Uh, rock music and the thing that is so crazy to me now that I think about it is that he used to have Tibetan throat singing music <laughs> now, I'm not, it's crazy because it's like I don't know if you like ever heard it crazy it's kind of like mm, oh, right? right you hear that stuff mm-hmm. and he would play that record and for some reason he always play it at night and, like, he would play it for guests that come over because he was so intrigued by it. Uh-huh. But it would freak me the <laughs> out. Like, it was crazy because I was actually scared. I remember I'd be crying while that plays because I felt <laughs> like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? I can picture you in the corner, like, cutting potatoes or something. Right? So I was like, I was like, Just oh, crying. my God. Like, <laughs> going to die. <laughs> so, like, I think I understood the power of music because... It, if it could evoke fear, it could evoke anything else. Mm-hmm. So, like, my dad would play jazz, and that'd be... Whoa. Shit. My dad would play jazz, and that would be soothing. Um, my dad would play ca- classical. So that was, like, I guess, like, my first memory. And then he had this record by... Um, damn, why am I going blank right now? Because that's what I do. Uh, it was by the German... It was a German group. Uh, and they did the first rendition in the 50s of, like, electrical music. Remember I brought them up before? It was, um... Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is my dad. He'd be like, Richard, um, you know this group? I'm like, there's mad groups. He's like, you know the one from the 70s? I'm like, uh, no. That narrows it down. He's man. like, it's like, uh, all in oats. All in all oats. In oats. <laughs> Like yes, he's like I used to be in the studio with Olin Oates taking their picture. I was like, mind you, my dad is so ridiculous. Like I gotta get you guys up on my my. Yeah, if you could find that picture of your dad that you have of him when he was younger, yes. looking like one of the members of the Beatles, <laughs> we'll post it in the video because that shit is so funny. Can I share one of my stories with my dad because it seems that I've shared this in the past and everybody like loves it. Any any time that you could say a story with that French <laughs> accent, I'm all for it. So go for it. <laughs> so my dad, one summer in France, he was a uh, he was working on the whole like, I guess like uh, toilet system oh, no. in the house. This is the toilet story? Yes. <laughs> say it. Go go go. So my dad was working on the whole like yeah toilet system, and we're just having lunch. He's like Richard. He's like. Whatever you do, do not flush the toilet. <laughs> I'm like, all right, Dad, that's so fine. elegant. That's fine. That's fine. He's like, he's like, very, very important. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm like, I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna make some beats, whatever, right? So I'm there. I'm making beats, and I'm like, overwhelmingly have that sensation, like, damn, I gotta take a piss. <laughs> So I'm so ADD, focused on my beats, where I was at, just to get back to the computer. I take this piss, right? I flush the toilet. And all I hear is... (laughs) And then from the far distance, all you hear is... Like I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) Literally. Right, literally. So So 
I'm like running down the stairs. He's like, Richel, I told you one thing. Do not flush the toilet. And then he's like, he literally has towels oh, no. going against the wall. And it's like all this like piss water oh. hitting his face. He's like, Richel, your grandmother's arm wow. And it's like, he's like, we've had it for so many years. And he's just like, so then if you could imagine, yeah. there's this cut scene, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just like this candlelight. And he's like, like chopping into the stink. He's like, you had one scene to do and one scene to <laughs> you do. You had it. one job. And bro. mind you, it just smells all oh, around no. us. Oh, and man. he's just trying to be like, cool. Because my at the end of the my, day, my dad, like he has these bursts. But then he like comes down and he's really cool about it. So it's like one or the other. <laughs> But that shit was just... Yo, that's one of my favorite stories. Being off topic, but uh, I have to share that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say one of, my, one of my favorite stories of your dad. <laughs> now, your dad lives in France, so he came to visit, what, twice since we've known each yeah, other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there was one time, <clears throat> you were still living in Livingston at the time, where he gives us the list of groceries to go get. Yes. Remember this story? Yes. So, he gives us a whole <laughs> list. He's writing out this list, right? So he gives us the basics, right? What was it? Um, he'll be like, he'll like be, a lot of the times so he'll hit steak you know, or like steak, chicken, tomatoes, or tomatoes, and then we come across this one word. It was like literally spelled O O I G N L E S. Yes, so it's spelled. We read it out in the French accent. Yeah, right. Or like onions. We're like onions. I was like. Oh, oh, he wants onions. <laughs> onions. <laughs> that's so crazy. So, that same night, I believe it's the same night, right, where he whips up this dope ass meal. I don't My even dad is a bomb ass cook, by the way. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember what it was that he cooked. So when we were sitting at the table, if you could imagine this, so it was, uh, Mr. Jacques. Jacques. I know what he made because I have a weird ass memory like this. It was it like Asian food? He made sticky rice, but it was remember. like it's it. The way he calls sticky rice, it's fried rice uh-huh. mixed with all the stuff, but he makes it with like the, the sushi rice. Okay. So it stays in the bowl like that. Uh, so like balls of rice stuff with stuff in it. Exactly. Stuff balls of rice? I it's, guess you call it. It's 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 mixed fried rice uh-huh. with like Okay. Sushi rice. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess we could call it sushi rice. So yeah, yeah. Mr. Jacques made sushi rice for us. So if you could imagine this in your head, it was him sitting right here. Then it's myself, and then it was you were sitting right next to me, right? So, yeah. And then it was somebody else at the end of the table. I forget who it was. Might probably have been GT. GT yeah. It was probably GT because it was at his house. Well, <clears throat> we're eating or whatever, and your dad has a super thick accent. Oh yeah. So I'm understanding maybe every other word that he's saying to me, and plus I'm spacing out because I'm like eating, and I tend to space out sometimes if you tell a really long story. <laughs> So my dad likes to talk his ass off. Yeah. So I lose focus for a little bit. I'm eating while he's talking in this ear. You guys are talking in this ear. Uh, completely different conversation. And I come back into the conversation <laughs> and he's red as hell from laughing hysterically, screaming out the words fucking Japanese. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he was talking saying. about. I hope it wasn't racist. But when he said that. And the way he was laughing and the accent in which right. he said it had me dying. God damn it. So, yeah. My dad loves anything corny. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, it's like, we'll eat corn. And he'll be <laughs> eating it. And my dad's like got this nostril flare when he eats corn. It's like... <laughs> it's like a and little he, rabbit. And then he'll look at me and he'll be like, Richelle, this is so corny. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Dad joke. One really? One. <laughs> Really? And he does that laugh. It's so funny. Oh, my God. I love when he calls you on Skype, too. When he calls you on Skype, we're always busy. At least when I'm here, he always calls you when we're busy. My brother and I go crazy because, like, there'll be these spikes of, like, technical difficulties. So once my dad, like, starts going off, he'll start laughing. He'll be like, ha, 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 And it'll be, like, distorted. And, and that'll get me and my brother going where it's, like... <laughs> It's just a horrible snowball effect of ridiculousness, yeah, but that's so way off topic. Yeah. I, know, I know. I just love when he says bye bye. Bye bye. Like, you guys are working okay. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to where we were. Yeah. Uh, most distant m- music memory. Yes. I'm going to push you more towards what I'm thinking of that okay. you've told me. So I'm going to push you more in the direction 
of see when I'm talking to people, right? Yeah. And I know the answer that I want to get. Yeah. Like when I'm working with some of my kids, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to make them realize the point I'm trying to get across. Gotcha. I'm trying to get them to say it. Be- gotcha. Trying to get them to say it before I say it. You know okay. what I mean? Because it's much more powerful when they come to the realization and they come full circle and then you see the light bulb yes. pop up in their head. So what I'll do is I'll steer the conversation in the direction that I want. So, I think I know what you want, though. Mm-hmm. And so hip-hop related. Okay. Your most distant hip-hop relation. So distant hip-hop is, again, it was between Ja Rule and Jay-Z at the time. Where's DJ Jules? Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> um, so that's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> when, like I said, in our first podcast, I watched The Box a lot. Mm-hmm. So The Box was showing all these music videos. They had Holla Holla. And then they had Holla Holla Remix with Memphis Bleak, Jay-Z. And this was also the time um, where Jay-Z had Can I Get a What What. So basically, I was like, okay, how do I obtain this music? So I would have hangout times where I would visit my grandparents. And you know, grandparents always want to spoil the grandchildren. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, I think it was around a holiday. I really wanted a CD player. So they got me my first CD player. And then it was on me to try to get like, they didn't, I don't think they knew like what I was listening to. So where my mom would probably check a package and be like, this says explicit content. Mm-hmm. My grandparents was like, that's a nice picture of a young man. <laughs> you know, so like... they that's a nice young man with no shirt on. Is that a gun in his pocket? <laughs> I'm like... twisties in his hair. So I was like, all right, like, cool. Like, I just want to rock out to this music. So I remember my first CD was Vedi Vidi Vici, Ja Rule. What was that album art look like? Do you remember? Yeah, it was um, it was like that faded, you know, photograph look, and he was like praying up, That's and like that that was always gonna be ingrained in my mind. And crazy part is, again, fast forward to us opening up for Ja Rule. That was the craziest thing in my life. Where it's like that was my first CD, and that was a big first artist big artists that we open up for so nothing is impossible remember that yes sir but the my second cd was jay-z volume two hard knock life even though i knew about reasonable doubt and all that there we go can we put that in the camera or like we can post it later i don't know if you guys could see that yeah looks good yeah yeah but that that pretty on point yeah man so Mm -hmm. That that was really big to me. And then music, I didn't have an older brother. You know what I'm saying? So I was I was an only child up to nine years of my life. So then my little brother came. But it's one of those things like music was like your older brother to me because it gave me swag. It gave mm-hmm. me it gave me insight on like. What is, he, what is he talking about? <laughs> yeah, it gave me insight on the drug game. No, it gave you insight on drugs, sex, all this other the stuff. The city stuff. Yeah. yeah, like, we didn't have, like, internet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that. And, like, a lot of the time, like, if you just revolve yourself around other kids that don't know what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. kids back then, they're like, girls pee out of their butts. And you're just like, okay. Like, it, sound, it sounds like an episode of Big Mouth. What you talking about, man? <laughs> Yeah, I tripping. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's stuff like that where it's like music kind of gives you insight, especially back then on like real world situations. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. with me, it would probably be a, around the same time too, where Ja Rule, the Jay Z's were popping. Uh, I do remember. I don't even remember how I got money. I definitely didn't steal it from anybody. It was probably like birthday money or something uh, that I put together. And I used to go to this one store. It was like one of those like, I don't know if you know what Easy Pickens is. Like one of those like weird stores that sell things for like $2. Five below. Yeah. So it was like a clothing store that sold like very, very cheap like clothing or whatever. So I used to go. Remember Odd Job? Odd Job. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have something similar to that now. It's called Hobby Lobby. Do you think they they got it off the character from 007 though? Maybe. Because the guy had a hat, too. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Right? I always questioned that as a kid. I was like, did they actually just, like, somebody like this odd job character? Interesting. 
Okay. Or maybe he I'll was talk. the one that opened it. <laughs> Anyway, so so he's gonna go to the store. It was called. Maybe he's the one who opened. It. <laughs> I don't know. Like he actually exists. He's like comes up from the counter. All you see is a ball hat. He's because like, he's super short. He's a little Asian dude. But um, so the store was called Loco Loco. Okay. Like stupidest name ever. But I used to go to this store, right? And in the corner of the store, literally, it was probably like a space of like maybe. Four feet by four feet. Hustler magazine. Plus the display window. Yeah. So this guy used to sell bootleg CDs. And back then, mixtapes were popular. So he used to sell mixtapes. Like ones that he used to burn on CDs. Okay. For like five bucks. And like a mix of songs and stuff like that. And he would sell the CDs that would come out. So I used to walk from 190th Street to about... This must have been like a 179th. Or so, because you lived on one seventy six. I live at one ninety. One ninety. Stat lived on one seventy six. That's true. So, I walked that long distance just to get my little cash together to buy an M CD. Or the first CD I actually bought with my own money was the Ludacris CD. The, oh wow! Uh, word of mouth, and again, Ja rules. Uh, three three six was it? Yeah. Rule three three six. Those are the first two I bought with my own money. And uh, Eminem's uh, Marshall Mathers, Ugh. Marshall LP. Mathers LP, okay. which was stolen from me on a school trip, which I, which was unfortunate because I go to the school trip right. Mm. I was probably like seventh grade, so I was seventh grade, like twelve years old, maybe thirteen. Mm-hmm. So twelve, thirteen years old, I had my stupid little backpack. I had my CDs in there. My um, I think it was just one CD that day, and uh, my CD player. And we were on this trip to like some kind of garden somewhere, you know, stupid corny yeah. school trips from back in the day where they'll take you to like a garden to like <laughs> plant trees or something. So we end up at this place. Child labor laws. Some random, <laughs> basically free labor. Yo, that, oh my God. Wow. Free farm work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was nothing illegal back then. It was so funny. But anyway, so we get to this farm <laughs> doing labor for these farmers for free. And when we get off the bus, we asked the, I think one of the teachers, we were like, oh, can we leave our stuff here? Mm. She said, yes. Dumb. Dumb B word. Dumb B word. Yes. We get back. It's a completely different bus. And all of our stuff is gone. And I lose my prized possession. Who hired this chick? My Marshall Mathers LP CD. And my CD player, by the way. Damn. So, anyway, that's my distant music memory. I used to walk around with my um, my huge CD player, which was probably like the size of a pocket. Damn. Just crazy. Yeah, like you, with like stuff. they actually, well, it's funny though, like pockets back then were um, a lot bigger. <laughs> a lot bigger. Um, the pants were a lot bigger back then too. We used to wear like huge pants, like MC Hammer pants. But I remember... Uh, Walk into the bus to go to work, right? Mm-hmm. My first job I got at like 15, almost 16. Mm-hmm. I used to work at this jewelry store where I used to polish jewelry, you know, sweep up the place, vacuum the place, just clean like little things here and this there. This is interesting. This is a yeah. first. I know what that is. No. Yeah, I used to work at a jewelry store. I used to polish jewelry and stuff. Wow. But um, I was basically like the little slave boy. <laughs> Jules J. <laughs> ben Baller. Yo. And I was, I was a hustler back then, too, because I was like, yo, I've been here for a year. Like, I'm done polishing jewelry. Yo, can I get a job on the sales floor? Yo. He was like, just throw a shirt on, throw a tie on, and we'll figure it out. Wow. I didn't like it. But anyway, that's besides the point. So <laughs> I used to put this CD player in my pocket. Used to run the the uh, headphones cord through the shirt and out the top. Wow. So when I used to walk to the bus... I had a CD player in my pocket. Mm. But back then, the CD players didn't have the anti-skip thing. Gotcha. So whenever you would take a step, it would skip. It's the most annoying thing in the world. So what I used to do is I used to walk with a limp. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I used to walk with a limp so that it wouldn't skip. So you wow. would, let's say it's in my left pocket, you would take that really long, like, weird step with your left leg so it won't skip the song. <laughs> Mind you, girls in the high school, like, oh my God, look oh at that God. guy. He's such a pee. Look at that swag. <laughs> anyway, it was, somewhere, it was in here in Jersey. But you anyway. know what I used to have? <laughs> uh, Pac Sun sold it. And I bought, oh, Angry Train hey, Part boy, 2. Boy, what's up? Um, I had a backpack. I think it was by Osiris. Mm hmm. 
and it had speakers on this side. Yo, you would have obnoxious guy that used to play music. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Put some headphones on, bro. But everybody loved it. Like we would be bumping like Jewel's like Dipset Anthem and stuff like that. Like during lunch because for lunch we got to leave school mm-hmm. so like we would like bump that and i remember like that was so dope where we we had like freestyle battles and like we put a beat on on my backpack mm-hmm. and it was like right there mm-hmm. it's like a boom box wherever you went it was so dope. those things are popular these days now yeah. uh, i've seen kids all the time with like either a bluetooth speaker hanging from their backpack or their bikes and the mcm the brand around. came out with one but it's like 3g yeah no. it's crazy it's not that noise <laughs> so um work life balance Oof. i'm just gonna throw that out there okay work life balance it's 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 hard because um work takes the forefront mm-hmm. so i feel like a lot of the time even being out last night like it feels weird to me like it feels weird to actually have time to myself and that's probably something that i should look into Mm -hmm. but um i think right now it's kind of like grind out vacation later Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's for me i don't think the way i like to live my life anyway or the way i like to party i've never been a crazy party guy Mm -hmm. so like my retirement even if i'm like you know, 50, 60, I like to do chill things. I like to go to restaurants. I like to lay back. So for me, even if it comes at a later time in my life, like I'm good with it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like, I'm, I'm willing to grind out now, chill later. Mm-hmm. And, you know, which is funny. Cause I see it, <laughs> at least for you, mm-hmm. you were going as a bystander. Right. You were a civilian yesterday, just enjoying a show. But in the sense, in the back of your mind, it's still work. It's still work. You're still networking. You got to network and right. everything like that. Like I, I rarely, rarely have moments where like I just, I, I just, I mean, I guess I could show like my, my lunch times are really chill moments for me because I take mm-hmm. European lunch times. Like I'll take an hour or two to myself mm-hmm. before I go back to editing or mm-hmm. Whatever the hell I'm doing, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but um, take those breaks. Yeah, I try, I try to I try to um balance the best I can, mm-hmm. you know, my personal life and everything else because mm-hmm. you need to. But I haven't had a break this year, but mm-hmm. I also enjoy what I do. When I think about it, like I think we had this discussion too. Like if I had some moments to myself, like I'd probably be on YouTube studying something. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, that's just mm-hmm. important. But. I was going to say that as the people that we are, I feel like we're always looking to take ourselves to the next step, right? Mm-hmm. So even when we have downtime, even when we feel like we're doing something on downtime, we're always doing something to progress, right? I was going to so, say we're, we're progressive people, right? Like, so, and not... I'm not saying that you know, hmm, but mm-hmm. no, it's just like that's what we. That's like just to who do. we are, yeah. right? So, you being that you went to a show last night, and you went to just enjoy the music, mm-hmm. you're still there, subconsciously maybe, networking, to maybe link up with this artist or pitch some beats to this person or pitch photography or cinematography to somebody. So, like for me, for example, I'm always on this thing. Yeah. So if you see me on my phone, I'm always either on Twitter, social media, just looking for what's new, mm-hmm. um, trying to stay relevant in the sense of trying to build our following. Yeah. Um, so even, let's say, if I'm at the gym, right, mm-hmm. which is really my downtime for mm-hmm. like an hour, an hour and a half, I put my headphones in and just space out. I'm always either listening to podcasts or watching YouTube videos. Yeah. Or even when I'm watching movies, I'm like studying movies yeah. now. You gotta like, study the greats to become one. You know right. I'm so I'm studying the, the angles, I'm studying lines, I'm studying how uh, stories develop. I'm always studying things that the, I guess the average movie goer, average movie listener, um, music listener doesn't do. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, it, it, it's not something that I do forcefully. It, like, for some reason, it just I just do that. You know, and it's could be for the best. I would like to think I'd do it for the best, because like I think it's earlier, become we're like we're you trying know, to 
advance. Like what maybe this is like a subtle like you know <clears throat> sale, but I'm saying like it's second nature. Mm. It's really become second nature. To second nature, out on Spotify, iTunes, Plug. Google Play, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> No, but it really is like it, for me. It's like second nature to like you know study to expand my knowledge because I love doing what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, like I anticipate these podcasts every week now. Mm-hmm. I anticipate you know editing music videos. My mm-hmm. turnaround time is quicker because I actually enjoy the artists that I work with. Right. You know, things like that are always super super important. You guys should be picky and choosy to who you work with. Because mm-hmm. other things could become a headache, and then you're like, yeah. oh, I hate it. What I ended up thinking I love. And it's mm-hmm. like, no. Shit. Let's do that, my no, you're just, you know, like, you're you're working with the, the wrong people. Or you're mm-hmm. you're being, you're, you don't know how to say no. And that takes, you know, maturity. So. Yeah. And you don't want to set yourself up um, to do something you don't enjoy. So you're enjoying video editing. You're enjoying photography. You're mm-hmm. enjoying music. But you don't want to put yourself in a position just to get a quick buck. Yeah. Um, to the point where you're not enjoying yourself. Like, let's say you link up with an artist you don't particularly like, but you're doing it for the money. So it feels like a job. Yeah. Because I had a reflect moment last night, too, saying that everybody knows me as the videographer, photographer now. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, I always want to strive hard to be known as the artist. Mm-hmm. So it's like, sometimes when you pick up a lot of things and you end up being good at them Mm -hmm. it's hard again that's why i said you don't know you strive so hard to be perceived a certain way Mm -hmm. so you don't know how everybody's perceiving you Mm -hmm. to me i'm the photographer and only the photographer to some people other people i'm a videographer other people i'm a musician still Mm -hmm. other people i'm just like an artist or i'm that guy they know from high school you know what i'm saying so Full circle, my friend. Full circle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's tough when you're trying to cut the middleman out of everything and trying to be as, fish, as efficient as possible. We kind of get lost in the sauce mm-hmm. in the sense that we started off as music artists. And to cut out the middleman, we started doing our own photography. That way we got the pictures the way we wanted and we didn't have to come out of pocket to pay for something that we didn't necessarily enjoy. Not saying that we didn't enjoy the, yeah. the product that we got from always other pay, photographers. Yeah, always pay for good product. But <clears throat> right. if, if you constantly pay for product or people that don't give you or exceed your expectation, it's not worth it. Right. So same thing with videos. Uh, we did a couple of music videos, which we enjoyed, but feel like we could have taken it a step further if we were in full control of it. Exactly. Which comes with its challenges because obviously it's just me and you. Um and then sometimes we'll have some people that help us out here and there. But for mm. the most part, it's just you and I. Mm. And it comes very becomes very challenging at times. But at the end of the day, we get the product exactly how we want it at the end of the day. Wow. And we don't have to come out of pocket for something we may or may not enjoy. 100%. Final product. 100%. Shout out to Rock Davis. Yes. We love your shit. Rock Davis. <laughs> Itchy out. <laughs> so, learned, a um, lot, learned a lot from these guys. To wrap up. I have the word affirmation written down here. You told me to write it down. Yes. You affirmation. Um, I guess we'll wrap up with affirmation because... Before you do that, I'll read the definition of affirmation. Gotcha. Affirmation. It's a noun. The action or process of affirming something or being affirmed. I hate when they define stuff like that. Like using the word, parts of the word to define the word. Mm-hmm. Right? This is an Affirmation. The process of being affirming. Well, the thing... Emotional support or encouragement. The That's thing is, I feel like there's affirmations within life where you end up at a certain place or point, mm-hmm. like, and you're like, it's because you visualized it, or it makes sense to why you're there when you look back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, life has always been like a huge movie, like Crash. I say, I end up in this situation. One of the best movies. That's what I'm saying. I say, like, I see it all the time. Like, there's a certain, the more you visualize something and the more you speak it into existence or believe in it, you literally see it come to life. There's um, women in my life that throughout my course of relationships, like, I've seen myself with certain women. I end up with those women and this and this and that. And I think that's powerful. 
same thing in music. Like I've envisioned those moments where we would meet Red Man the way I saw it, but then it happened. And that to me was affirmation. I'm supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like when we made the track Premonitions of an Aquarius, like we're always, you keep that premonition in your head, like this is going to happen. It's so strong. And then when it does, it's affirmation to me mm-hmm. that you're supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. I wish I could go more into it, into detail. I know we're going to wrap up, mm-hmm. but maybe I'll save it for the next podcast of actual examples and stuff like that. But to me, I've had many moments of affirmation, and that's why I brought it up to you to put it as a note, because I really feel that the more, again, like I said, you the more you visualize something, and the, the more that you put the pieces of the puzzle together of why this happened or why that happened, you realize, again, it was navigating you towards to this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, so in a sense, speak it into existence type of speak thing. Speak it into existence and realize it's happening. Mm. You know, um, we we are magnets mm. in this universe. And the more you source that energy you'll have anything you want gravitate towards you. And I really believe that, you know, like there's, there's a day where I was like, Oh, you know, uh, I never saw myself shaking this person's hand and it happened, you know, all that stuff. So basically that's it on my end. I'll, I'll probably go into further detail, um, next time, but, uh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So I think we should have done this in the beginning, but, you know, now that we're wrapping up, yeah. Subscribe, yes. Like, yes. Leave a comment, yes. Comment tell, is super important. Yeah, tell everybody about this, man, because we're we're going super hard on this. Uh, we have a bunch of people. I don't want to put a number on it, but we've had a bunch of people reach out to us saying that they enjoy what we've been talking about so far. It's super relatable, so we want more ears to listen to this. So you know. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Like I always say, word of mouth is always the best form of advertisement. And um, I think we're know. getting more and more comfortable with what we're doing, but we're also waiting to have the official setup yep. to really like go in and like do the product reviews, mm-hmm. do artists to look out for all these things. So mm-hmm. third time, I think has been a charm. Mm-hmm. And from here on going into the new year, yep. You will see some officialness, mm-hmm. angry train. Three appearances today. Right? Three appearances. <laughs> so we're on our third podcast. Three pre- appearances of angry That's train. So we should name them. What it's official. Them? What should we name the angry train? I don't know. Well, it sounds like an angry person. Jesus. That's angry. How about... Boris. Boris. He sounds like Boris the Angry Train. Boris the Angry Train. It is. There you go. So, like I said, subscribe, like, comment. Yes. Those are all super important to push this forward. Um, Also, if you can just jump into the Apple podcast, even if you don't listen on Apple. Wow, he's super angry today. (laughs) Boris is angry. (laughs) So, I think we should link that little emoji in this time. We will. will. So, Apple podcasts, even if you don't listen on Apple, uh, if you're a Spotify listener or a YouTube listener, go to the Apple Podcasts, uh, rate it, give it from a star from one to five, be completely honest, and also leave a review as well because that also pushes up higher in the um, the podcast section so more people can get us, uh, uh, so more people can listen to us. So, you know, this is the third episode. We hope you enjoy all the crap we spoke about today. Uh, if you have any more questions, any topics that you want us to discuss, Hit us up either via text, if you have our numbers, uh, Instagram, either our own personal pages or the group page. Uh, shoot us a DM, leave a comment in the uh, YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, check them all before the episode. Uh, we record a new episode. And uh, yeah, man, just keep on pushing. We're here for you guys. And uh, what is your go-to like hang-up word? Like when you're on the phone, what do you say? I heard somebody say the word one. Remember uh, that? That was like popular back in the day. Yo, one. I would say, Click. uh, all right, peace. Peace is a go-to one for me or later. Yeah. Later. So. So with that said, <laughs> we're going to start with the intro and we're going to out with the outro. Because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Because that's what you're supposed to do. Anyway, we're rambling. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you guys.
drop that intro with the outro. Here we go. Can you hear it?